Hi, I'm Sutha Baraja. I'm one of the nephrologists at Johns Hopkins, and welcome to the ABCs of kidney disease. In this uh, section today, we're going to review management of chronic kidney disease. So we're going to start with talking a little bit about medications. Now, the medications are broken down into two categories. They're either prescribed to treat the risk factors that can speed up kidney damage, so blood pressure medications, diabetes medications, are all part of your cre kidney treatment plan. Then there are medications that we prescribe to manage the complications of kidney disease. So if people develop anemia, the medications such as the iron or the erythropoietin are part of that treatment plan. Not everyone will get the same treatment plan. It's really going to be individualized based on what your risk factors for kidney disease progression are and what other health conditions you have and what your lab work is looking like. Now, there are some basic recommendations we give to people regardless of the type of kidney disease they have and the stage that they have in terms of some things that can help slow down the progression. One are some of the basic dietary changes. We want to restrict the sodium intake to less than two grams a day. We want to reduce the consumption of processed foods and high sugary foods because those are all things that the kidneys have to work harder to get rid of. And we talk about a moderate protein restriction. We need a certain amount of protein to maintain our muscle mass, maintain our immune system, but too much protein our body can't use and our kidneys have to work harder to get rid of it. And then there's more discussion lately about using plant-based options. Those are better, sometimes better choices because they have a lower amount of acid, lower amount of uric acid, and a lower amount of cholesterol. So sometimes swapping out some of the meals for a plant-based option will help with slowing down the progression of kidney issues. Now, there's always a lot of discussion about water intake. You do want to stay hydrated because dehydration can cause some changes in your kidney function panel, but there's no specific amount of water that someone needs to drink unless they have a history of kidney stones. Now, you may be on certain water restrictions or fluid restrictions depending on what other health conditions you have, so this is going to be individualized and uh, kind of driven by discussions you have with your healthcare team. Now, your doctor will also give you other guidelines for your diet based on your lab work. Some people might be on a potassium restriction, some people might be on a phosphorus restriction, but that's not 100% across the board for people who have kidney disease. So just because you hear about somebody else being treated with those dietary restrictions doesn't mean that that would be what you need to have done for your kidney disease. And when we're doing those restrictions, it's really to try to accommodate what the kidneys can't get rid of efficiently. When we look at the overall plan for slowing down the progression of kidney disease, it comes down to a couple of categories. Blood pressure control, blood sugar control, smoking cessation, regular exercise, reduction of protein in the urine if you have that, and keeping a healthy weight. Now, these are sort of standard recommendations regardless of what type of kidney disease you might have or what level of kidney issues you have. When we also talk about kidney disease pr progression, we also want to worry about things that could put an extra stressor on the kidneys. And so we keep in mind things like imaging studies that use contrast may have an impact on the kidney function. So it doesn't mean that you don't have those studies. It doesn't mean that those studies may not be necessary, but it is something that you would discuss with your healthcare team to see if that's an appropriate choice for you or what they can do to help reduce your risk of having problems. Also, medication interactions can be harmful when people have kidney issues. No one can look at you and know what your level of kidney function is. And a lot of us go to multiple different doctors or we might go to an urgent care center. So it's really important for you to be able to know what your level of kidney function is or make sure that if somebody is prescribing medications for you that they, they're aware that you have kidney disease so they pick medications that are going to be safe for the kidneys or adjust the dosing. You want to be careful with sort of uh, regular use of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory agents such as ibuprofen and Motrin, Advil, Aleve. Those agents are over the counter, so people often think that they can't cause any harm. Some of these can interact with your blood pressure medications or prevent your blood pressure from being under good control, and long-term use can end up causing some scarring and some damage in the kidneys. 
You also want to be careful with some of the bowel agents, such as milk of magnesia and some of the preps for colonoscopy. You want to make sure people know that you have kidney issues so that they prescribe the appropriate one. And if you're ever unsure, double check with your pharmacist or your physician about, you know, before starting any new medications. Another key part of kidney disease management is really being engaged and being part of your healthcare team. You wanna be monitoring your progress by tracking your labs and knowing what the trend is. You wanna know your medications and ask questions as to what they're for and how to take them. You wanna be engaged with that healthcare team and you wanna incorporate healthy lifestyle choices because that overall will help your um, outcomes. And ask for help, you know, if you're struggling with dietary choices, if you don't know what to do with your medications, there's teams of people that are, you know, taking care of you that are willing to help and they just need to know what resources you need. Thank you for listening to our presentation today. This was part of the Johns Hopkins Nephrology Patient Education Program with the goal of improving lives of individuals living with kidney disease. If you want to learn more, here are several resources which have information about being engaged in your own health care, learning what your labs mean, learning what your different medications are, and some different dietary choices. Thank you.